refreshments for the audacious spread that they put together. So the next time you're at the bookshop on Pleasant Street to go shopping for used books, please remember to thank them for all of their fantastic baking. Um, here's the format we're going to use today. Each of these lovely people up here on stage is going to have about a minute and a half to give a quick introduction to that organization that they represent and the services that you will find there. Um, if you didn't already grab one, um, Susan, could you wave that thing around there? <laughs> we have put together a flyer that includes contact information for the organizations that supply it to us, except for two mistakes. One of them is a misspelling on an email for the Greenmont Gospel. Chapel, so my bad. Should be Pastor Gordy, not Pastor Gody. And also, Linda with St. John's Church sent me information to put in, and I missed it. So apologies to St. John. Okay, so I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to do a quick introduction for the library. I'll practice my library voice again. <laughs> um, you can hear me again? Okay. We'll have our sound engineer work on the other one. Oh. Great. Now I don't have to do that. Yeah. So, Kimball <laughs> Public Library is two doors down, for those of you who don't know that. Right now, the library is working on three strategic priorities, and you will have seen evidence of one of those if you've been in the library for the past month and a half. That is to make our historic building as useful as possible. So right now, we're finishing up a project to improve our HVAC, including better heating and cooling, and most important of all, actual mechanical ventilation. So hopefully soon, we will not be asking people to mask when they come in. Our other two strategic priorities are to offer as much programming that will um, appeal to as many people in our community as possible, using as many community members as possible to present that programming. So in the month of March, my mind is blown by this, we had 37 events for youth. 37. <laughs> About 50 programs in total. So we run the age span, not just for kids. Um, and last but not least, we're really pushing into youth engagement right now, so we just started an initiative and hired a new staff member to work on asset-based community development, specifically looking at the youth in our community, reaching out to them, finding out how they want to make their community a better place, and helping to provide the supports that they need in order to bring those goals to fruition. So those are the library's three institutes to do your priorities. Um, and I think with that said, I'll pass this on to Anne Howard. Hi, I'm Anne Howard. I am the SASH coordinator here in Randolph. Um, SASH stands for Support and Services at Home. That said, I work for Randolph Area Community Development Corporation, and I am based majority out of senior housing in town but I do go out to the community and work with individuals who live in their own homes as well. Not that the senior apartments aren't their own homes, but you know, out of the village and around. Um, I help people with all sorts of things, from goal setting related to their health, to figuring out what the next steps in their life is based on what their goals are. Um, I also help people with advanced directives, so if anyone wants to talk to me about that, I'm glad to help. Hi, I'm Andrea Easton, and I'm here to represent the White River Valley Chamber of Commerce. And we're based out of Randolph, but we cover 11 small communities around the Randolph area in central Vermont, from Brookfield to Sharon and Hancock, over to Tunbridge and Chelsea, all the little towns in between. Uh, we represent um, the community in a business way. We have membership that we can um, do projects and support community events. We manage the 4th of July, 
and the Halloween festivities with the town and RICBC. And um, we managed a little building up at the exit four spot, the info barn. So if you have community events or you want to post information that's open to the public to do that. And uh, we provide insurance for uh, membership that covers dental and eyes. If you've got insurance or a small business owner or an entrepreneur or a company, we might be able to serve you in that way as well. Hi, I'm Mimi Burstein. I'm the assessor and minister for the town of Randolph. Um, I work in the town. I'll be overseeing the town library appraisal, but um, if you have questions about your property or anything, just always come by my office. It's Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 4. Um, or by appointment, because sometimes I'm out for inspection. Hi, I'm Jana Cathy, and I'm here representing NAMI. NAMI Vermont is a there's a, it's a national organization, National Alliance for Mental Illness. It's an organization that supports and educates and advocates for people living with mental health conditions. Um, my role is I um, help to run a family-to-family -family educational um, class that uh, is in central Vermont. We, since the pandemic, we have a Zoom, we have Zoom sessions of those eight-week classes. We also have um, in-person sessions and um, uh, the groups are run by people who have lived experience of a family member who has who's living with a mental health condition or symptoms of a trauma. So that's what I do. There's oh, and there's lots of info over in the room about our meetings and our other um, our other support. Uh, because we have a lot of other things going on, too. My name is Emery Matthias. I'm the Randolph Town Clerk and Treasurer. I, am, um, I do a lot of things, but mostly <laughs> uh, land records. I collect property taxes. Uh, I'm your election official, if you're in Randolph. And uh, generally, I try and be an information center for the town. Uh, come find me at uh, 7 Summer Street anytime you need any any help, really. Hi, my name is Paige Mirko. I work at the rec, uh, well, town of Randolph Rec Department with Emery and me and Mark who's walking away from me right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's at 7 Summer Street. That's where my office is down in the basement. Um, I do all things recreation. Um, we just came out of the ice rink. So um, the rec department runs that. Uh, we're going right into baseball. So registration for baseball, t-ball, rookies, minors, majors. Um, after that is the summer program, and that runs from the week after school gets out until August 18th. Um, and we service about 60 kids and partner with Kimball and a bunch of other communities, uh, uh, community members around the community. Um, then we kick off with, oh, soccer's in there, and <laughs> <laughs> we have um, uh, basketball, um, and uh, Lego STEM is going on right now, um, that's in Randolph Elementary, um, yeah, and I just hope to keep adding to it and um, open for suggestions. Thank you. Uh, my name is Morgan Eastman, daughter of Andrea Eastman. Um, and I'm here to represent Ridgeline Outdoor Collective. I grew up in this area and went to Vermont Tech, got involved with Ridgeline in 2015. And now the organization is an umbrella over Pittsfield, Randolph, and Rochester for summer trail usage. And we also manage two backcountry related zones, one in Braintree and one in Brandon Gap. Um, and I work. Uh, more specifically within the club on youth programming. So we're partnering with Randolph Rec as we usually do for offering bike programming. And exciting to be partner, uh, to partner with uh, the library on some after school bike options um, for the spring for safe riding, bike maintenance, um, and yeah, also have some information over in the gallery. So come and find me. Hi, 
my name is Megan O'Toole. I'm the chair of the select board in the town of Braintree. Um, our town office location is on Route 12A, just as you're kind of entering into Braintree and heading out of Randolph. And our town clerk and treasurer and our administrative assistant are typically there during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, if you need any town services or have any questions um, for those folks. Um, some things that we're working on in Braintree right now that might be of interest to folks, and we invite you to join us um, during our regular select board meetings, which happen the first and third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. at our town office on Route 12A. Um, we're currently figuring out uh, how to allocate our ARPA funds, which is an allocation of the American Rescue Plan Act funding that each municipality in Vermont got last year. And some exciting things we're doing with that funding is to create a heating fuel assistance program for Ring Tree residents administered through Capstone, uh, Capstone as an adder to other assistance that they currently offer. Um, my, my day job is that I work at the Agency of Natural Resources of managing our climate change mitigation programming, and so I'm excited that Braintree is going to hopefully be participating in the Municipal Energy Resilience Program for fuel switching and weatherization for town buildings, so that's another project that we have upcoming this year. Um, we're also working on securing a long-term source of gravel and looking into purchasing a gravel pit, which um, uh, is much more exciting than it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also in the process of updating our town plan and our zoning bylaws uh, with a focus on you know, how we want to look at land use in Braintree as we're coming out of COVID. Um, the more people are working from home or staying from home or staying more locally. Um, so those are all things we're working on. I really encourage you to come and join us. Um, uh, reach out offline or during a meeting, again, first and third Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Chloe Powell, and I'm the new executive director here at the Chandler. I imagine most of you are somewhat familiar with the Chandler, at least because you made it here for this meeting. Um, but we do a wide array of programming, from music to community theater, and we've got the great gallery where I hope to meet some of you afterwards um, for the treats. Um, so there is a lot of interest in reviving our community theater program, so if you're interested in getting involved with that, I'd love to talk to you. We are um, bringing back the youth theater program the second time in person this year. We've got a production of Grease. Um, it's not too late if you know any kids that want to sign up. It's not too late for them to, to get involved. That'll be the first two weeks out of school with the, um, the performance happening the weekend before the 4th of July. Um, I am very interested in partnering with a lot of you and I'm glad to um, see a lot of people I've been in conversation with or emailing with. Um, uh, we're interested in getting more involved in the schools, bringing back after school programming. Um, there is input, there's some uh, momentum towards starting strings education program. Um, which I guess was very vibrant in uh, the 60s and 70s. And there's, uh, I personally, I, I play the, the fiddle and the cello, and so I like the idea of getting some strings education going here in town. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. But. Hello, I'm Jess Wilkinson. I'm the program director at the White River Craft Center. We are the large Victorian uh, mansion that was once uh, Colonel Kimball's of the Kimball Library's house. Um, we've been around for about 20 plus years and um, we've, had, we've always had an intention around craft and craft education and art education um, and bringing in local artists um, and being heavily involved in the community through various um, engagements with nonprofits and different organizations. Um, but with me starting about before, just before the pandemic, we've made a really big push to focus on our arts education and um, really getting a lot of artists in the building. So we now have um, 13 um, artists in our studios. So we're a pretty large um, community in that way. We also have regular um, programming that happens both for youth and adults. Um, and we partnered recently with Brainstorm Art Supply and offering them in their location in addition to the Craft Center. Um, we're always looking to uh, do community collaborations, um, and just as um, was said by many people, we're very open to, and I'm always excited to talk with um, people in the community and 
um, and people on the stage about different collaborations that are possible. Um, I think it really strengthens our community. Um, I also failed to mention that we do have a printmaking studio that's actually run by Janet, <laughs> Kathy, um, and Morgan is also a studio artist with us. Um, Lynn has shown at the Craft Center, so we have um, in our gallery programming, so we have a lot of connections that take place. Um, we have a dark room photography lab that we're trying to activate this upcoming year. Um, and we also have a weaving studio, which has been um, in existence for quite some time. And we're also the home of the Vermont, Vermont Weavers Guild, um, which meet, we meet monthly. Um, and they have a, a really great uh, programming that happens throughout the year. Um, yeah, so I think that's all about us, but I'd love to chat with everyone um, after this. Thank you so much. Lynn? Do you feel like you could pause for a second? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions you would like to ask at this point? Are there any folks you have you want more information from at this point? No. No, okay. Then take it away. Okay. Oh, what's up, Carl? All up just this. I'm probably a special needs type. But I can't hear all that well. Okay. Maybe the mic closer, closer to my mouth. Yep. Sure, I'll help her out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynn Petroselli. I'm a resident of Randolph for the last seven years. And um, I have grown to love this community uh, because I love to give after I retired. I am representing the Rotary Noon Club. Rotary has enhanced um, my seeing the background of all the different organizations that are here in Randolph that need volunteer support. Even, even stuffing envelopes for an annual fundraiser. I mean, if somebody can just give an hour, a year, um, or at the food shelf, um, or at the Chandler, just ushering, um, learning all the different people in town. And it's just, um, the Rotary is like a silent uh, club. We are very good at writing out checks. And some people say, well, what do you do? We do a lot of fundraising, but we also do a lot of um, networking with different businesses and different um, people just in town. Um, we have speakers maybe once or twice a month um, to enhance our knowledge about the different businesses or organizations here in town. Um, I'm also a member of the Green Mountain Gospel Chapel which helps me balance faith and giving and volunteering <laughs> because all you have to do is give time. Volunteering doesn't cost anything. Volunteering enhances your own life and it enhances the person that you're helping. It can be a ride to a doctor's office it can be a ride to the food shelf. It can be just being there for somebody. Um, so I find that this community is such a great place to live. And I just look up here again at all the people on the panel, and I have met them anywhere from Gifford Hospital, the food shelf, the Chandler, Morgan helped me. We volunteered on the art bus three or four years ago. Um, I met her mom years ago at the Jocelyn House. Anne is part of my church, and I volunteer with the SAS program. So I just am here to be knowledgeable that anybody can pick up the phone and with any of these organizations and just say, how can I help? And if it's just one hour of your life, it is such a giving hour that makes you feel so welcomed here in town. So. I 
I am Noreen Fordham, and I am here to represent Gifford and also the My Healthy uh, Vermont Self Management Programs. Uh, these programs are free programs, workshops that help people uh, get started and provide the support that they need to get, keep going. Um, through these programs, you can learn how to make uh, practical lifestyle changes with the support of a trained facilitator and a small group of people. Um, these workshops, again, are free. There are currently, we have a diabetes prevention workshop, diabetes management workshop, high blood pressure management workshop. Um, if you need help with quitting smoking, we're available to help you. Chronic disease management workshop and a chronic pain workshop. Um, you can reach me, I'm in the Kingwood building, but if you call the Gifford main number and ask for um, my name, again, is Noreen, and I'm part of the community health team. Um, they will direct you right toward to me, and all again, all the materials with these programs are free. So not only is the program, but also the materials um, that come with it. Hi, my name is Erica Gregowski. I am one of five members of the select board here in Randolph. Uh, our next select board meeting that's public, you can zoom in or come in person, is April 13th at 5 p.m., that's a Thursday. Some things that we've been discussing recently are obviously policing, <clears throat> so, and we are working with the East Randolph Community Group. They've come in a few times discussing a business plan to further renovate their community center in East Randolph. So if you're interested in that or you'd like to volunteer your time to help them get that up and running, that would be fantastic. Um, again, like many of us have spoke about, volunteering your time in our small community really benefits everyone, as we do have uh, limited resources available to often pay big funds. So if you have a talent or a skill and you'd like to put it to use in the community, we're always looking for that as well as a number of these great folks are also. Um, a little bit about the select board. There's five members currently. It's the governing body of Randolph as well as other towns in Vermont. And the town manager is in charge of hiring. All of the staff members within the town hall that we have here. Um, so if you have any questions about jobs that are available, you can go to randolphvermont.org and see if you would like to apply there. And if you have any questions, I'll be available afterwards as well. Thank you. My name is Lori Kozar. I don't live in your community. Actually, I live all the way over in Peachum, but I know Mark Rosalvo, and this happens to be my service territory. I work for Capstone Community Action for a pilot program for financial coaching and energy efficiency. And the program is called Green Saving Smart, and it's funded by the legislature for three years. And what we're hoping to do is help people access energy saving rebates and incentives, some of those through Efficiency Vermont, some of those through the utility companies, uh, some of them are state or federal funded uh, tax rebates or other incentives. Um, there's a lot coming out, and if you have any curiosity about that, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Lori Kozar, and I work at Capstone Community Action out of the Barry office in Gable Place. Um, but you can reach the program at greensavingsmart.org. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel DeStefano. I'm here representing the Randolph Area Food Shelf. The Food Shelf provides food as well as personal care items to the people who live um, in Randolph, Braintree, Brookfield, and East Granville, although we welcome everyone. Uh, we provide these in a grocery store-like setting, and we envision a community in which everyone has access to sufficient food. We're located at 12 Prince Street, next to Capstone, actually, and the Bowling Alley. We are open five days a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 3 to 5 p.m., Tuesday, 1 to 5 p.m., and then we have evening hours on Thursday from 5 to 7. People may come to shop every day for fresh produce and bread. Um, they can shop for everything else once a week. 
And we aim to provide really well-rounded food options, um, so that includes all the major categories like dairy and meat, um, like I said, fresh produce is a big one, and then a bunch of non-perishable goods as well. Uh, we're also a USDA food distribution site, um, so participants can pick up their USDA foods monthly. And in addition to our storefront, um, or food pantry, we also have some other programs. So for example, we have a program called SKIP, which stands for School Kids Program, and that provides a week's worth of meals and snacks um, for kids and families during school uh, vacations. We also distribute meal bags around the holidays, um, as well as Thanksgiving turkeys. And finally, we are an all-volunteer organization. We have no paid staff, so um, we welcome volunteers for a wide range of things and we are supported by a very generous community and a um, multitude of grants and other sources. Hi, I'm Linda Anderson. I am the Director for Family and Community Support Services with Capstone Community Action. I am based here in Randolph, down at Prince Street, right next door to Food Shelf. We have a variety of programs that are geared toward alleviating the effects of poverty, helping people move out of poverty and stabilize and hopefully moving toward sustainability and success later on. Um, we have Head Start, Early Head Start to work with young families who need access to early um, education. We have case management services that go into homes and help um, folks with parenting skills and learning how to get their kids ready to go to school. We have a weatherization program to help folks reduce their utilization of electricity or um, fossil fuels tighten up their homes. We have a community economic development department which has budget coaching and credit coaching. Also helps with folks who want to start small businesses. In fact, we have a um, series of classes going on right now. My department provides housing counseling for folks who are literally homeless or about to be. We also have energy services for folks that uh, a, be at a quarter of a tank of fuel, 25% of propane, have a week's worth of wood, don't have the money to get more. Um, their income guidelines, and a whole bunch of things that, each program is a little different, give us a call, if we can help, we'll try. Um, beyond that, we also really get involved in our communities, and we try to create networks that can approach a variety of problems that we see in our community to work together, because we need a bunch of different people at the table, we need a bunch of different creative ideas on how we resolve this um, situation. One thing right now that we're working on, talking about volunteer opportunities, um, is looking at the access to shelter. There really isn't much here in the Randolph area. So one of the projects that we're working on in the community is looking at what we could do as a community to create shelter options. So if that's something you're interested in, love to talk to you after. We have lots of other programs, lots of other things going on. It's all anti-poverty work and trying to create sustainability. So feel free to give me a call or drop by out there and talk to me. Hello, my name is Linda Nagy. I am representing um, St. John's Episcopal Church. Um, the church has been part of this community for over 150 years, and we're located at 15 Summer Street, which is parallel to Main Street. We have Sunday services at 10 a.m., both in person and online via Zoom, followed by the best coffee hour. And our parish is consistently characterized as warm and welcoming, visit us in person and see who we are. Uh, we've got a variety of activities, including a book study group open to the community. And our outreach activities include monthly donations to the food shop. We have an emergency overnight shelter with two cots in one crib. And if anybody wants to know more about that, I can put you in touch with our contact person, Linda Runyon. Um, we do Christmas donations to the Brookhaven School, Dismas House dinners twice a year. We have a strong connection to a church in Zimbabwe and support them as much as we are able. We support other charities annually through our outreach budget and parish collections. For example, we made a recent donation for earthquake relief efforts in Turkey and Syria through the Episcopal Relief and Development Fund. We host AA meetings every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. And our parish hall is available for use with suggested donations. Um, and as an example, a family hosted a child's birthday party in the parish hall. So 
but that's all I have. Put it on my two minute timer. Hi, my name is Mark Rosalbo. I'm the economic development director for the town of Randolph and the, the zoning director. Um, so I've got the best job in the town and the worst. Uh, zoning is, is a pretty tough one, but uh, if you're new here, you've got, I see a lot of new faces. Uh, if, if you have questions about zoning, about uh, you know, what you can and maybe can't do on property, uh, if you are looking for uh, ideas of if you own a property, if you're looking for something that you can do to help uh, increase housing in the community, uh, you can come to the, to the zoning office. I'm happy to sit down with you, happy to talk with you about uh, different options that you have. Um, you know, as you can see here, the, the, you know, the adage of it takes a village to raise a family, this is what we're trying to convey with, with this type of event, to see how many, uh, how many people are here to help how many people are here to, uh, to see that our communities are thriving, Randolph and Braintree and, uh, and you know, all the communities that are around central Vermont that we are brothers and sisters to. So, uh, and one of my, my jobs as economic development director is to, to look at the bigger picture, the longer term goals of our town, of our community, uh, and make sure that we're moving in a direction that's healthy, that fits with, uh, that fits with the philosophy and of what the people in the community want in the future. Uh, so the I'm a pro, I'm, it's, it's easy to reach me, you just have to go down to the town hall. I work with, with Emery and, and Mimi, and uh, I'm happy at any point to, oh, I'm sorry, Paige. With Paige as well. Uh, I'm in the basement. Yeah, she's in the basement, so we don't see each other we see her too often. But anyways, um, this is, uh, we have a fantastic town. There's so many wonderful things going on. We have, uh, there are challenges that we're facing. Obviously, housing is an issue. Trying to, that's my two-minute uh, thing. Uh, trying to figure out ways for, for, to, to build child care. But there's a million exciting things, and I'm happy to, to address them with anyone who has questions. And finally, if you're looking to build or bring a business in the community, please reach out. I'm happy to talk to you. Happy to help you myself, happy to, to connect you to some of the people that uh, can help you no matter what stage you are in your, uh, in your idea. Thank you. I'm going to talk about one more entity uh, that serves the White River Valley watershed in Vermont. It's a partnership between Kimball Library and Vail, which is building a local, a local economy and organization, a community building organization in South Royalton. Um, we partner together to run the White River Time Exchange. So for those of you who are not familiar with the concept of a time exchange, it takes the idea of bartering your skills and services one step further to create a web of people, members of the time exchange, who offer services and or ask for help, whether that's um, helping turn over the garden in the spring, um, whether it's somebody who needs a ride to the airport in Burlington, um, whether I put a request for baked goods for this event on the time exchange. Um, all of these sorts of ways to share the skills that we all have um, in a non-monetary manner to help our fellow community members and to feel free then to seek help when we need it is the purpose of the White River Time Exchange. Yeah. Okay. So this time around, I'm happy to say we actually have time for questions because everybody was so great about being concise um, with their introductions. Are there questions from the audience for any of the folks up here? We have a microphone. I, I have a question for the audience. How many of you learned? How many, how many of you learned about something so far that you didn't know about before you came in? Sure. The member of the audience asks, is there a resource that 
walk away with that has websites, contact information, and so on. And I'm gonna say yes, but no, but yes. So when you go out the door, if you look to your right, you'll see there's a folded um, sheet. Maybe, John, could you wave that around? Um, yeah, just outside the door. It includes the contact information for a handful of the organizations that we invited to participate in this panel. We would have had two rows of chairs this long if everybody had um, elected to participate. So it's a partial list, I'm sorry to say. I'm happy to say that yes, we do get you started. Anyway. Can I say one more thing about that? I, I'll add to be totally transparent, are you new to town or have you been here for a while? Okay, um, there in the rural kind of smaller communities like this with so much going on um, in the age of the digital world, I think Vermont lags in some of that. Um, but I think there's a lot of people in this room, markers all behind you, the chamber, RACBC, they all kind of have a great network of all of these resources and they're trying to devise a plan currently to best create a source for everything that they have. And there are various websites and things that exist amongst those three, but I think there's more work going on similar to this panel of like, how do we create these resources in one place for people? And today is kind of that opportunity, but there is some work around what you're asking for, if that helps. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> I can get a mic. that we try to organize 
um, and thought we did a really good job of PR and refreshments, Amy, and all the things that you do that you have to pull together, um, we would get six people or ten if that was a really good, if we really pulled in a lot of people. And at first we got discouraged and then we realized, oh, this is our working group. These are the people that really care about this and then we can go from there. So I would say, I said to you, Amy, keep going. This is good. You've got some plans, you've got some ability to put lists of things out so that people know um, what, what, what's happening and who the contact people are. Um, so very heartwarming to see this again um, and um, really, really uh, good wishes for everybody. I would like, as a, per as a senior citizen here, to have some image of the next 10 years in Randolph. So if that has anything to do with how you all, I know you all have goals and things that you have to plan for, but I don't think you're gonna answer that today, but what does it look like for the next 10 years in Randolph? Um, that would be my question. Anybody else want to answer as well? <laughs> Anybody else in the audience want to get on first? You. I'll just take this a step further, Susan. Thank you very much. Um, that was very good. Uh, I've been across the stage as a seven-year-old, so I've been here 50, 60 years. Um, <laughs> and I just want to say that what I would say the next 10 years would look like to me is a wonderful group of young people yes. coming in and starting to take the seats and the responsibilities of the community that we live in, which has started to age. And I think we all, we all feel it in the community. And I think it's because um, volunteering is tough because you've got children, you've got jobs, and you travel. And it's hard to make time for a lot of that, but we welcome all of you to join us and make this crowd younger. And you're doing great. On our Chamber of Commerce, finally, I think I'm next to oldest of nine people on the board, and we just brought in three new young folks that I think will pick up the ball beautifully because they're networking with us through and from other communities. Is there anyone else that would like to add to that? Take the stage very well, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another question? Did you, did you have something to ask? No? Yes? Senior Center offers an awful lot. Um, they do meals on wheels. They have meals there at the Senior Center. And uh, they have a lot of things like foot care and Tai Chi at the, uh, at the Center. Thank you for that. More folks able to hear? Uh, and then also, yes, it's a little 
key towards having those for that next 10 year uh, demographic that you're talking about. And welcoming people and saying, yeah, come on in and join the sewing club or the this and that. Because sometimes for a while, you feel a little um, daunting to come into the circles, but also getting to know each other. I'm happy to go to the club. I love it, Erica. <laughs> two weeks and then we promptly moved again after that. Um, again, like Alia said, um, get out there. You know, there's classes you can take. Um, one of my personal New Year's resolutions was to get out and take a class every, every, one time every month this year. So there are community classes like pottery and stained glass and then you've got the White River Craft Center and everyone is super social. I know a lot of times it's cold and we're wearing our hoods and our hats and we're just trying to get to the next place, but always stop and say hi, um, you know, going out in the evenings, going out for breakfast, that kind of thing. The even though we have this New England kind of attitude, everybody that I've seen when my husband and I decided to retire here is that everybody is willing to help, but you also have to be willing to ask because nobody is, you know, going to assume that you need something. Um, but you have to be brave enough to put yourself out there and ask for help. And, you know, I just learned about Amy's resource today, giving time. So that's going to be a fantastic thing. Um, as far as, you know, job searching and all of that kind of stuff, we have the Front Porch Forum um, that you can sign up for. I'm sure you have. And, you know, Facebook groups, Randolph. And then just once you start seeing this network of people, you know, you got to spread your web and people know people that either jobs aren't necessarily listed because it's such a small community um, and, you know, we don't always have the funds available as small businesses to post on Indeed or to post on these bigger websites and stuff. So just going in and out of different places and, you know, standing on the street corner for 15 minutes will definitely find someone who needs help with something. So, <laughs> yeah. It's getting nicer though. It'll stop snowing in May. And, <laughs> So just as someone who has transplanted a lot and has had to reinvent themselves multiple times, even just in the past 10 years, it can be really tiring. It's like dating all over again just to find new friends. So just don't be afraid to do that. And you know, Morgan is the best person to help you make friends. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would add, um, if you're interested in joining any committees at the Chandler, we have a gallery committee. Um, we have a um, social justice theme festival, um, which I'm looking for community input for. Um, what other committees? Community theater committee. Um, Randolph Singers. Randolph Singers. Um, so there's lots of places to get involved. And then you said library services? Library sites? Mm -hmm. Okay. I finished my degree in May, actually. Okay. Oh, the budget committee. <laughs> 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 there might be a job opening up in uh, Woodstock at the library. I just want to say, you know, when I moved here 12 years ago, I'm a pretty shy person, and I found that if I um, joined, like many of the people here have been saying, I volunteered, and where I volunteered was the Chandler Gallery because I'm interested in art. So just think of something you're interested in and that can be your volunteer place to be. And the nice thing about volunteering I mean, classes are great too, but a volunteer job could last you for many, many years <laughs> because, um, <laughs> and then you can get relationships with the other people that are volunteering in the same in the same organization. Oh, just before uh, I pass it on there, best summary of what everyone said so far is to live in this sort of smaller rural style community. You need to be involved in some capacity, and you need to have a hobby. And if you don't have a hobby, there's a lot of classes around here to figure out what your hobby could be. <laughs> he told me that on Facebook. <laughs> yes, that's, my, that's like my most sage advice. I should make a bumper sticker. So I'm a fellow Kansas undergrad. Oh, hey. Yay. And um, 
there are two job openings in our ECDC currently. And if you are around town on the first Friday of the month, we have lovely events that are free and you can wander down Merchants Row and people come by and sell food and just visit and there's a band and dancing and good times to meet people. And that will start happening again very soon because we don't do it when it's January, February, and March. <laughs> and April. Oh, and April, but we don't talk about April, so. <laughs> also, Braintree Elementary School is hiring a librarian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a suggestion. Okay. Um, I when I first moved here, it wasn't a few years ago, it was 1977. But, um, okay, I had a loud voice. Um, I couldn't start off by just, from, just volunteering or taking classes because I needed to bring in some money. <laughs> and so what I did is I just, I was hoping to work in the school system because I had my newly minted masters but there were no jobs, full-time jobs. So I just started taking jobs. And I had a job for three weeks. It was great incentive to look for other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned I was not an 11 to 7 person. But I met a lot of people working really hard from 11 to 7. Then I popped over to the nursing home that's where the White River Craft Center is now, and totally <coughs> untrained, became a nurse's aide, worked a 3 to 11 job, loved it. Um, then from there, started working for the local mental health agency, which was closer because my degree is in special education. And that led to another job that it developed, where I was working with that agency in the mental health agency till I retired four years ago. So like 40 years, and I loved that last 30 years of work. So you don't have to wait for the perfect job. People will find out about your work ethic. You'll meet a whole lot of people who give you clues when something's coming up. And you learn a whole lot if you've done a straight academic thing going through. You learn a whole lot about yourself and about the world of work out there. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, and comments? Yes, 211 for information and referral. So if you need a thing and you don't know where to go to get it, dial 211. Right? <laughs> Not my 211. <laughs> um, I'm going to bring you the mic, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you what used to be the best kept secret, um, but may not be anymore, which is that there are resources available to you at the Vermont Tech campus. Um, the library is still open. Um, Vermont residents can borrow from any of the Vermont, Vermont State College libraries who want to be a membership there. The Vermont Tech Library in particular has a fantastic DVD collection. You still have a DVD player. Um, they also they have rich resources not only in the areas in which they do programming, so they have a great construction trades collection and landscape design collection, but they have a broad, beautiful, fantastic collection. Um, and if you aren't familiar with this, SHAPE is the um, health, I don't want to say, it has the, the gym, weights, um, and a pool. So, there's the trails as well nearby uh, for mountain biking and walking, the back 40 there, which is really nice. 
but I may have missed this. What would you say is the next social engagement that your group is holding that people should put on their calendar? Or is it the meeting that's coming up? Do you mean the individual? Or just the, the, main, the organization as a whole? Is there um, no, individual events? I think it sounds like a really great idea to do some kind of event around the world out of that website. I don't know whether it would be a tabling event or something like that, but we, I don't know. What do you think? But there's new people and more established community members. You can have an exchange. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, you tell us. What should we do? <laughs> Some kind of a next gathering. Okay, great. I like that. Volunteer day. We'd be happy to host. Thank you, Chandler. I forgot to say that. Thank you, Chandler, for hosting this event today. Carl, you have a question? No, I was just going to say you should point out that. Uh, the Vermont Tech Library has lollipops on the counter. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know also too about uh, Green Mountain Ch uh, Gospel Chapel. There's, we don't have to belong to our uh, congregation, but on Mondays we have a Wrapped in Love quilting <coughs> And we um, make quilts for organizations, for missions. We make laundry bags for homeless, pillowcases for Teen Challenge. Um, and we meet like from 9.30 to 1.30. Um, and that's on Mondays. Also too, we have Bible studies. Uh, we have a men's breakfast that the community uh, is welcome to come. And Ian, do you remember what time? Is it like six to eight? I think so. Yeah, it's Monday. I don't <laughs> yeah. It's Tuesday mornings, and it's from 6 to 8, um, and it's a good way for um, just to commingle, and um, you don't have to belong to the uh, congregation. Um, there's other uh, Bible studies that we have, and also, too, on Wednesday nights, we have a Master of um, Martial Arts that gives his free time for children at 5, mm -hmm. Then the next age group is at six, and then adults is at seven. So that's on Wednesday evenings, and uh, he always has it posted on the um, Randolph Vermont resources. Um, there's, um, we have an event coming up on Saturday um, for people just to learn about um, Jesus. And I find that um, sometimes, I'm a, not afraid to ask people if they'd like prayer, but, you know, it's, it's people do need prayer. And um, I'm always willing to um, give anybody any encouragement, any hope, because um, somehow I found this town to be a very giving, and I'm just giving back because I'll probably be here for the next 20 years. And uh, I, you know, I just hope that if the time comes that I need help, then somebody will be able to assist me. And um, that's, that's kind of my vision. Um, but all these people here, um, I don't know the young lady's name out there, um, but Mary. Mary, but when you do start meeting different people, you are gonna see that there is such a positive energy that I can't believe how many people that I have met through different organizations right here on the panel. And Linda, I finally meet you in person. I see your emails and on front porch form and stuff. <laughs> but um, it's, it's funny because you start putting names and faces together. And um, you know, you're going to love this town. You really are. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I also forgot to mention um, that there, so I've been partnering with a lot of organizations in town around the arts, um, and there's a lot of movement around the arts lately, which is super exciting. Um, and um, tentatively, I'm working with Vincent Freeman of the um, underground um, studio and recording studio, or listening room and recording studio. Um, we're going to have an artist mixer on July 22nd, but that's in development. Um, we also, um, I 
I was a part of the um, Randolph Arts and Culture Committee, which is kind of reinventing itself right now, but we've put on a number of events, and one of them is Make Music Day, which is taking place um, June 21st. Um, and also on Facebook, um, we are currently posting uh, the week's rundown of events in the arts that are taking place in the area. Um, so I found that in terms of like getting the information about what's happening in the area or what's available and all that, um, it's kind of a, a multi-pronged approach. Facebook is good, Front Porch Forum, The Herald. Um, so again, it's kind of leaning in and just kind of navigating it to find out what's happening. But um, yeah, there, I think getting together and creating more social opportunities is really important. Um, so I know at the Craft Center, I'm happy to chat about ways in which I can do that. Also, at the Chandler, we've been hosting some community potlucks preceding some of our shows, which have been a great space to meet people. So get on our mail list if you want. <laughs> Speaking of potlucks, so folks who are ready to move in and go eat all the goodies at the Friends of the Library. Thank you. 